there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a pencil. Well, there are a bunch of you out there that are probably thinking, <laughs> has Kenny lost his mind? Well, you know what, maybe I have, but the whole purpose of today's show is basically I'm wondering if I can do it. That's all. It all came about when I watched one of those, you know, how is it made shows on the internet. It turns out I was watching something else. I fell down a rabbit hole. Next thing I know, I'm watching how these big industrial units make our general yellow school pencils. And uh, it was really an interesting process. And I got to wondering if I was going to make one pencil, how would I make one? I obviously don't have setups to make a kajillion of them, um, but what if I only want to make one? And that's what we're going to do today. So it all is going to start off with our selection of stock. Well, initially I had this scrap of walnut there on the shelf and I thought, you know what? This hasn't really got much of a use for anything. Why not turn that into a pencil? But then, the more I was looking up on the rack, I had these scraps from our Diamond Dots cat frame that I made. And they're scraps of cherry, and I honestly, it's a pretty small piece. So I decided that considering I like working with cherry, it's, a, it's an easy to work with wood, so I thought this is what I'm going to use. Now, the next piece of material that we need would be one of these and this is a five inch lead i've measured one and just like they say sure enough it's two millimeters which really doesn't mean much to me because i'm not a big metric guy but when you do measure it out it turns out to be approximately 560 force there you go so what i'm doing is i am taking a one eighth inch um straight bit and I've got it placed in the router table and I've just barely got it raised up out of the table like just a touch so I've done some test cuts on a piece of half inch plywood and I've run this bit several times just to test its height and that sort of thing and what we're going to do is I'm going to route in a couple pieces of the cherry, I'm going to route this little rounded dado and we're going to make a sandwich and glue it together and there will be our lead on the inside. So I guess what I'm going to do is I want to cut this cherry down. Um, I'm not sure exactly how big. I'm thinking maybe three eighths of an inch wide. So each piece will be three eighths by three quarters of an inch. And that will give us a total thickness in the end of three quarters by three quarters. And it's going to be, let's say five and a half to six inches long, considering that is a five inch piece. So let's go five and a half to six and three eighths of an inch in width. Well, what I have done is I've taken the pieces and I've put them together and I've aligned them so that when they're glued back together, I think that the grain uh, will blend in the best way. And once I got them in that orientation, I marked one end so that I know the end that goes together as well. I placed a mark. There's a little tiny scribble there and there's a little X there. Those are the inside where the cuts will be made. So... <laughs> Everything should go together fairly seamlessly here. I have the fence set so that the bit will strike right in the middle of our piece. I've done some test cuts as I showed you on the piece of plywood to make sure I have the height set correctly and I have locked it down. And now it's just a matter of running these pieces through to get our rounded dados into our pencil blanks. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bead of CA glue in one of these grooves. Now, there was some inconsistencies in them, some jagged edges, and I, I made sure that uh, I sanded those out so that the lead fit in there properly. So I've got a small bead of CA glue in there. I'm just gonna take some accelerator and spray it on the graphite. I don't wanna do it <laughs> near the glue. And we're just gonna set it in place and slop it down there just like that. Just gonna use a scrap of wood to make sure that it's bottomed out in the groove. There we go. Beautiful. And now we will coat this other piece with wood glue, ensuring that it's a nice even coat. And we're gonna clamp it together and let this dry overnight. Oh yeah, also make sure that your, your lines that you drew for alignment are also lining up there, guys. Don't, don't let them get away on you. Okay, so I'm gonna clamp that together and then uh, I'll come back and see you. So let it dry overnight and then we can move on to the next step. Well, it's the next day and we have our assembly, it's all dry. And now it's time to take it out of the clamps and see exactly what it is that we ended up with. And it's really nothing special. It's just a block of cherry glued together and I think what it is that we need to do now is I need to take this over to the table saw and I'm just going to shear off our ends to make them flush, to make them, you know, nice and neat. Well, the next thing that I want to do that I have the ends all cleaned up now is I want to take a block plane and I just want to trim up our pencil blank. Now you just want to be careful here that you're not going crazy with the plane and nicking your fingers. Keep your fingers well away from it. Just work one end at a time and then you can backtrack afterwards to work the other end of the pencil. Now this is a time consuming process and uh, honestly I don't think you're going to be doing this very quickly. So I'm going to continue to shape this one end here with my block plane. And then when I get that one end done or close to it, I'll come back and see you. Well, this is going to be a time consuming process and it looks like I'm not getting some very even results. Now that I'm not worried about, I can always fix that up afterwards, but Either way, I'm going to continue to shape this and hopefully before too long I will have a usable pencil shape. Now I've got the one side sort of rounded off. I'm slowly getting that lead closer to the center. I guess in retrospect I probably could have made the blank smaller, but it was an experiment. It was made out of scrap and in the same context, I wasn't really sure what I was doing with it. But I'm now gonna flip it over and take all the sharp edges off of the opposite end of our shot pencil. Well, truth be told, this is actually going a lot faster than what I thought it was going to go. Uh, it was just a matter of getting a groove going and then of course once I got my plane stop here to help me uh, hold the pencil it's going much faster. But you want to keep an eye on that lead and once you start getting a little off center you need to get on the side that's um, out of whack and do a little bit of extra planing there to get the lead back in the middle kind of thing. So I'm going to continue to work on this until it's a diameter that I'm happy with. And then once I get that completely planed on both sides, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to see ya and uh, we'll move on from there.
And once you start getting close, you just want to lessen back on your cut depth just to give a little smoother finish. Now, I think that I have this, the diameter roughly that I want, and now we just need to give it a really good sanding. Now, your normal wood pencils are like in like an octagon shape, that sort of thing. Uh, this one's going to be round, so I'm just going to sand the living tar out of it till we get a nice little five and a half inch pencil. And when it's all said and done, we got one heck of a cute little pencil here. Now, what would be the point of this small little pencil? It does seem kind of short. By the time you sharpen it a couple of times, what's the point? Well, the point is, is that I really wanted it to, uh, to use this homemade or shop made pencil here in my beam compass attachment. So there you go. It'll be a custom cherry pencil. And uh, all that's left to do now is sharpen it. Now we did the majority of it with a little handheld pencil sharpener, but I'm just going to fine tune the lead with a small um, X-Acto knife here, only to minimize the lead loss or the graphite loss. Again, whatever you want to call that stuff that we glued in there. Either way, I think this is a pretty cool pencil. Look at that. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's one of a kind, boys. There's not another one of them around in the world. All right. Well, this has been fun and all, and I really enjoyed it, but you really don't think I was going to leave it just with this one little cherry pencil, do you? Because, uh, honestly, we can do better than just a cherry pencil. So... Let's move on to one of the other blanks that I glued up. Well, here is another pencil blank that I have glued up, and I thought it would be fun, other than just doing the handwork, to try to turn one. Now, I don't know how successful it'll be, but we're gonna try it. And what I've made this pencil out of is Flame Box Elder. Um, so I'm gonna try to turn this, and let's just see how we make out. Well, I think I've turned this down as much as I really want to. Uh, this one here will also fit in my beam compass. And um, I don't mind leaving the cherry without a finish. But man, leaving that flame box elder without a finish is almost criminal. You know what, man? Let's, let's, let's put a finish on this. We got to do this right. And just like our other unit, once it's finished here, what's left to do other than sharpen it? And there you have it. Shop made pencils. Guys, this project all came about because I just wondered if I could. It was for no other reason other than, gee, I wonder if I could do that. And, uh, I gave it a try and it was a success and I absolutely love them both. Whether it be the plain cherry one that was done using block planes only or whether it was the flame box elder that was turned on the lathe. Either way, both pencils have a ton of character and they're very functional and without a doubt they are spectacular. 
Uh, I am going to love putting both of these into my case with my Veritas Beam Compass and uh, they will get used exclusively with that from here on in. So you'll look for these on future shows. Sometimes, guys, it's not about if we should do something. It really isn't. This is a five and a half inch long pencil, which by most people's standards as a general use pencil in the shop would be pretty darn useless because you're constantly sharpening it to get that tip. This isn't gonna last long, but for something in a beam compass, it will last much longer because it doesn't get used as often. However, was it worth it to do all of that work just to get a pencil? All of those shavings from the plane just to get a pencil? Was it worth all that time and all that effort? Was it worth the glue up? Was it worth the thought process? Was it worth the filming? Was it worth bringing to you? Would I do it again? The answer to all of those is yes. A hundred percent, a thousand times yes because I enjoyed every minute of it. This is a great way just to use up some scrap and to spend some time in your shop. How many times have you come out to your shop thinking, oh man, really, I don't have much to do or you know anything planned. What can I work on today? You're hamming it on. Make a pencil, man. Make a pencil. Why not? It's something to do. I would much rather spend half an hour at a bench with a block plane shaving out a little pencil than sitting in front of an idiot box watching television programs. That's just me. Maybe next time, shut the TV off and give the pencils a try. <laughs> Guys, this has been a great project. One of the best things I like about this is not only does it build your skills on the lathe for you to turn something this small, but it also builds your skills with the block plane. You do have to be careful because you don't want to draw that block plane back too far and end up catching one of your fingers that you're holding it with. And if you're concerned about that, feel free to wear gloves while using the block plane for the hand that is used or holding the pencil blank. But as far as building skills and being able to plane on this pencil to get that lead right in the middle. As you can see, the lead is going off to one side or it's too far to the left or you're, you're making an oval, not a circle. You can slow it down and adjust and build the skills that you uh, will use for years to come with your block plane. So it's a great skill builder as well. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss notifications of future shows. If you enjoyed the content or if you think I'm just a nut, why not share it with your buddies? Let them have a laugh. Guys, I hope you're going to try this yourself. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.